Good afternoon, everybody. I am here on this very, very special day here at Discovery Park of America. Our brand new temporary exhibit, Astronaut, opens tonight for members only here at Discovery Park from 5 to 7, where you can have a chance to meet a real astronaut. <laughs> Dr. Lawrence DeLucas is here with us tonight. And uh, Dr. Lu or Dr. Lawrence DeLucas, I just want to thank you again for sitting down for a couple questions, a couple of um, yeah. of questions that I have and that I think that our audience would also be interested in learning about Happy being an astronaut it. as well. So the first question is, when did you realize that you were uh, that you were inspired and that you wanted to pursue a career in space? Probably when my first experiment went up. Uh, if you have an experiment on the space shuttle, um, the nice thing is they let you watch it in the VIP area, which is where the astronauts' spouses are. And so there's no one closer except a few people in bunkers. So you're about two and a half miles away. And, you know, I saw the fire and smoke as the, the rocket, the space shuttle starts to take off, but the sound hadn't reached me yet. And then all of a sudden you get hit in your chest with a shock wave of the sound. The ground starts to vibrate. And I don't know why, I've never cried at a funeral, but I started crying. And I turned and looked at my wife and she was crying. There were television reporters there. They were all crying. And then, you know, it just hit me. It was so amazing. I turned and said to everybody, I'm gonna fly on that one day. And they started laughing. Mm -hmm. And it just became a quest. It was something I had to experience. And so I kept putting experiments up on the shuttle. My experiments were very successful and I published the results from the science and, and uh, eventually built up enough of a reputation where I finally applied and got selected to fly myself. Oh, wow. And so what kind of experiments did you have up in space? So I was growing protein crystals in space and we grow the crystals of proteins in space because the crystal grows more perfectly and so the molecule, the protein in the crystal, is more ordered in the crystal. When we bring the crystals back, we expose them to an x-ray beam, and from the way the x-rays bounce off all the atoms in the protein that's repeated over and over to make the crystal, we can determine the structure. We can see where every atom is within thousands of an angstrom. And why is that important? Because if we see how that protein is structured, where every atom is, it tells us how it works in our body, and it also allows us where proteins play a role in diseases to design a drug to interact with that protein to fight that disease. And so it led to a large program in my laboratory, but also in other labs across the United States, in Europe, in Japan, in China. And, and today, even today, pharmaceutical companies are growing protein crystals up on the space station right now as we speak. Wow, that is incredible. So I know we were talking earlier, how many times did you have to apply before you were chosen? Well, over a period of seven years, <laughs> I, I finally got that selected. Was it. That was and, it. and the key was um, really publishing my results and building up a reputation. And then I, I had a little bit of luck too. Yeah. <laughs> the mission that I applied for, they were gonna do vision experiments. I'm also an eye doctor. Oh, that works out. A lot of biochemical molecular biology experiments, that's what my PhD in biochemistry played a role in. Uh -huh. And there were some optics involved, and I also have a degree in optics. And there so you go. it was like someone <laughs> looked at my resume, and, and uh, I got very lucky oh, wow. that it was a mission that I was really suited for. Wow, and your mission was on Space Shuttle Columbia STS 50, right? That's right. Very good, very good. So tell us about your experience in space. I wish I could put it into words. Uh, it's incredibly emotional to look down at Earth from space. Uh, NASA should fly a poet or a writer because it really is very emotional. When I flew, um, we had just had the first war finished with a rock. And so you could still see the fire burning in the oil fields in Kuwait. And I'd look down and see a beautiful area of Earth and see the fire burning. There's no lines between the countries. You're going over countries in minutes. Uh, we circle the Earth every 90 minutes. And it just you just know we're all living close together 
and, and yet we can't all work together and live together sometimes. Well, so that was one experience that was just, that you brought home with you as well. Yes. So, wow. Um, so for future astronauts, for those who are looking to seek a career in becoming an astronaut, what's a good piece of advice that you would give them? Well, walking through this museum, yes. funny thing happened. I'm wearing this jacket, and of course it says NASA, uh -huh. and this young boy, maybe eight, nine years old, walks up and asks me, are you an astronaut? I said, well, I was a former astronaut. And he said, please tell me, what does it take to become an astronaut? I couldn't believe it. this young boy asked me that. Yeah, and we so, did not plant that kid. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was amazing. And so I started telling him how important it was to read books because they look for people that are well-rounded. Um, choose a career maybe in some type of science or engineering, that would be helpful but also they look for people that like to explore, and that's very important. And so I told them a story about a student that I had that was a perfect grade A student in every course she ever took, it was a woman, and, uh, and she applied to be an astronaut and actually went to work for NASA and didn't get selected, couldn't even get an interview for three times of applying, and then finally met one of the people that is on the selection committee and asked, why is it, you know, I've never made a B, all A's in all my classes, and, and yet I'm not, not even getting an interview. And he said, well, you've done nothing in the area of exploration. So for this young boy, becoming a Boy Scout, many astronauts are Eagle Scouts, um, but just liking doing something that involves physical activity, exploration. So this student of mine actually took it to heart and went down to the South Pole for a few months and looked at these little microbes that can live in extreme environments. They're called extremophiles. Uh -huh. And then the next year actually got that interview. Still didn't get selected, yeah, but, but now, she now she's getting closer. Yeah. It's that hard, but yeah. I think it's gonna become easier. And I, right. told, I told this young boy, I think in the future with companies like SpaceX and, and Blue Origin, all these companies now are gonna be putting astronauts in space there are going to be more opportunities and I think it will become easier but still you need to have that background and uh, just work hard and have a passion right. for what you do right and I think he remembers everything I said <laughs> oh, wow that's incredible so I know you've had a chance to explore our new astronaut exhibit here at Discovery Park um, what was one that you could identify with or maybe it's all of it yeah, almost everything. Uh, the exercise area, I chose not to exercise as a scientist because I knew I, I won't have to land that space shuttle when we come back, but I was in space 14 days and not exercising. I actually lost 13% of my muscle mass in all my weight-bearing muscles, and many of the facilities you show here, um, they're the exact thing that we used on the shuttle and what we're using today on the space station. Um, the science uh, usually comes in in mid, what they call a mid-deck locker. Uh, some of them are full racks, and you have that same kind of thing displayed here in the museum, so it's very realistic. Yeah, so and it we, did bring back memories. Oh, it did? Well, good, <laughs> good. Um, so we might be inspiring a future astronaut who Absolutely. walks through these doors. Absolutely. Um, and then you've already shared that incredible story about the kid who he ran into an actual astronaut. <laughs> you know, how neat is that experience? So um, Dr. DeLucas will be here tonight for the members only sneak peek from five to seven with a special program at six and then he'll be um, signing some autographs. And we also have another local connection, Jason Kelly, who has worked for NASA as well and, and continues to work for them, who will also be here. So um, definitely members tonight, it's free for all members to experience this incredible astronaut exhibit and then it opens to the public tomorrow and will be open through May 3rd of 2020. So Dr. DeLucas, thank you so much for the interview and for um, giving us some insight on what it's like to be in space. Happy to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great one.